the launch of Selon Musk's Everything app took place today. And a lot of people on Twitter are guessing that X may eventually employ XRP as its internal payment system. I want to discuss whether or not I believe it to be true in this video. Talk about any future interaction Elon Musk has had with XRP instead of discussing whether or not I believe XRP will be a part of the Everything app. However, I also want to discuss some really intriguing study by Stefan Hubert regarding how Ripple controls the price of XRP near the end of the video. In order to demonstrate how XRP has changed in connection to Ripple purchasing and selling XRP over the past few years, I'm going to show you some pretty intriguing statistics that he recently put out. It's important to watch the entire video to see how fascinating this is, so I'd like to briefly go over the concept of an appeal in a Ripple SEC case to start off this video. I talked about this in depth in the previous videos, so I won't go on about it for more than a few minutes. I'd only wanted to share this tweet from John Deaton with you since I believe it to be quite significant. In this tweet, he was essentially stating that he did not believe the SEC would succeed in their appeal, even if they did decide to file one. In the end, he believes XRP won't ever be a security and Ripple will be able to sell XRP using a variety of different channels without it turning into a transaction involving securities. I responded to this by making a comment and I believe that tells you all there is to know about the appeal. I explained that the SEC gained nothing but is contesting the game's final play in layman's terms. We are essentially watching that right now. In this situation, the SEC lost. If they were to appeal the ruling, they would lose on all significant points. They would merely be trivial in their appeal. They have already conceded the key points, so their position won't change. Therefore, the SEC will truly challenge this decision. They would only be attempting to scare consumers and slightly swamp the market. But in the end, the most intelligent attorneys in the room genuinely believe they would lose. I'll stop talking about it after that in this video. Watch the most recent two videos if you want to learn more about the appeal's potential because I've really drilled it home throughout the previous few videos. I went into great detail about it, but now I want to get to the point and discuss the Everything app. One of Elon Musk's primary goals for his Everything app, x.com, which was just released, is payments. Many people are guessing that the new x.com app would employ XRP, but I truly don't think it will happen. I'm sorry to put an end to people's conjecture. Building an internal payment system doesn't really make sense, which is why I don't think that will happen. On a distributed blockchain, the keyword is internal. The primary cause of this is that internal centralized blockchain systems are far more efficient than decentralized ones. Furthermore, there is no need for a distributed decentralized blockchain technology to be integrated into Twitter. Twitter is already able to communicate with itself, so you don't need it. Internal payment systems don't actually require external compatibility. Twitter is currently only attempting to transfer money between users and this can all be done through a centralized database. Utilizing something like XRP, in all honesty, would only slow down the process. It would reduce efficiency, and in the end, just clog the XRP ledger with pointless payments. After all of that, XRP does have a place in the Everything app, specifically on two external platforms. So let's imagine you needed to pay on Twitter in order to utilize Twitter to actually purchase something through Uber, like a ride. To collaborate with a service like Uber, I keep referring to it as Twitter or Axe. Well, since you're linking two separate payment systems in that circumstance, using XRP makes logical. As a result, XRP has a position in the Everything app, but not necessarily inside of it. It connects various value systems with the Everything app. We'll see the same thing with banks and applies to practically everything. The number of banks that will develop an internal settlement system will be rather small. It just doesn't make sense on the XRP ledger internally. A bank can use a consolidated database much more easily. However, if that bank wishes to work with another bank that has a different system, it will need a means of connecting the two. And right there is where XRP excels. It's crucial to realize that the XRP ledger actually functions as a protocol for connecting disparate systems that cannot communicate with one another. It's a decentralized method of moving value around the globe without the need for trust, for a company-wide internal unified system. Since you are ultimately depending on that one business, then there are no trust difficulties. So it simply doesn't make sense to design a payment system on top of a blockchain. However, if you were to connect that application to a different third party, you would suddenly require a method of moving that value in a trustworthy manner. You don't want that value or that cash flow to be restricted or stopped in any way. Additionally, you don't want to create an API for each and every other external application when you could simply collaborate with the XRP ledger and instantly connect. I hope this makes that point clear. It really doesn't make much sense, in my opinion, if they are telling you that the new XCOM app will be developed on the XRP ledger. But if you're told that the XCOM app and the XRP ledger will work together, it actually makes a lot of sense, and I think we'll see that in the future. 
Elon Musk is undoubtedly one of the world's most intelligent engineers. He has a number of intimate acquaintances that have worked closely with Ripple and XRP. Additionally, we are aware of Elon Musk's own comments regarding the ongoing Ripple SEC issue. Elon Musk will use the most effective payment systems he can find, and I firmly believe he will eventually use XRP. Elon Musk's cryptocurrency ambitions do not end with Dogecoin, in my opinion. I believe he is far more knowledgeable than he lets on, but he is probably constrained in what he can truly discuss. I genuinely believe that XRP will play a role in connecting X.com to other payment platforms. And I even anticipate that X.com will one day offer XRP for sale. Additionally, it has already been rumored that this program will allow you to purchase cryptocurrency. We are all aware that XRP is the cryptocurrency with the most market clarity at the moment. So I cannot see how XRP could possibly not be included on X.com in the end. So let's go on and actually speak about some pretty intriguing data that Stefan Hubert is currently gathering. And this relates to the fundamental manner in which Ripple distributes XRP. It is crucial to realize that every protocol has a unique method for allocating tokens at this point. Most projects just sold all of their tokens for dirt cheap to a group of venture capitalists who later dumped them on the secondary market. Ripple didn't decide to act in that way. Instead, Ripple decided to market its XRP sales openly. They held the majority of the XRP and gradually released it to the market. However, I want to review a couple of Stefan Hubert's tweets because he identified a fascinating trend. Since 2023, Ripple has sold 2.2 billion XRP, approximately 50% greater than the typical 200 million per month in 2022 that works out to about 315 million monthly. The crying is about to begin now, but I can breathe well knowing that retail holders are not purchasing this XRP. Institutions are purchasing it in its place. And the reason we are aware of this is because Stephen Huber published a very intriguing graphic in which he overlaps the distribution of XRP with the chart showing its price. We can see that even though the price of XRP has been steadily rising, it hasn't really had an impact on the price of XRP. Through distributions, the value of XRP has risen and fallen. This indicates that XRP isn't simply being dumped on the open market. He also discovers another very intriguing fact, namely that the quantity of XRP stored on exchanges is largely stable. Therefore, this implies that the XRP being sold by Ripple is going somewhere other than retail holders since they are unable to consume that much XRP. And because it's effectively disappearing, it is ending up somewhere other than exchanges on the free market. The actual recipients of this XRP are therefore the assets institutional buyers. This is incredibly intriguing since it shows how democratically we are allocating XRP to institutions. It's not only being given to venture capitalists for pennies on the dollar so they can sell it. Instead, it is being offered for sale at market value to institutions so they can use it in the future. The way Ripple distributes XRP is something that so many people find problematic but the fact that it is transparent is the only reason they object to it. If Ripple followed the example set by the rest of the industry, they would just remain silent, refuse to provide the information I'm reporting on, and then bang. Since Ripple would essentially be selling to institutions for pennies on the dollar while keeping everyone else in the dark, nobody would object. Actually, Ripple's approach is much more equitable. Simply put, they are informing you that this is what is happening while selling XRP to institutions at market pricing. However, this spike down right here is the one highly bullish and intriguing aspect of this data. Ripple actually ceased selling XRP into the market at this point and started purchasing XRP instead. And what we witnessed was a total ripoff by XRP. There are only 100 billion XRP in existence, according to what we know. 100 billion XRP are all that will ever exist and Ripple itself has a predetermined amount of XRP. We also know that a significant percentage of the XRP held in escrow by Ripple, which many believe will be sold on the market, may already have been assigned to some of the biggest institutions in the world. It follows that there will be a day when Ripple won't provide these institutions XRP and dump it on the market. Including instead, many organizations including Ripple will need to purchase XRP. And what we observe is that the price of XRP explodes as a result, as we have already witnessed in a very tiny sample. This indicates that the XRP distribution method is essentially keeping the price low at the moment. This hasn't necessarily led to XRP simply falling and has merely been following the market. But based on what we do know, it's possible that when that occurs and Ripple institutions need to start purchasing the asset, the price of XRP might sharply increase. We will undoubtedly reach this point very soon, in my opinion. We'll see a situation where these institutions own the asset after we have clear legislation and know that Ripple has distributed enough XRP for them to use it for its full intended use case. They now require liquidity. They require an increase in the price of XRP in order to obtain liquidity. 
Along with me and you, the corporation Ripple wants the price of XRP to increase. Ultimately, what I'm really trying to convey is that the tokenomics for XRP will change instantly in the future. Institutions will compete to buy our XRP. We have only seen brief glimpses of what that is capable of for the cost. When this eventually takes effect, I can hardly wait to see what will happen. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. It truly means so much.